hello welcome back today we're going to be going through my top tips for creating better quality edits so we're going to be looking at how you can increase the quality and output of your edits and the way they look but before we jump into that i have my tiktok and my instagram up on the screen i post all of my edits to my tiktok and my instagram reels and i also post pictures with little anime references drawn in if you're interested you can go check them out but without further ado let's just jump straight into it so the first and probably most important tip that i can give you is making sure that you are downloading from high quality sources the quality of your download should be at least 720p at a minimum the biggest thing is that you can't make something better quality if you're downloading clips that are in 560 whatever 580 I don't know 260 P if you're downloading clips that are below 720p anything that you do to them the quality is still going to be not great so it's really important to get those clips downloaded from high quality sources as I said you want them at 720p at a minimum 1080p is the ideal quality that you're looking at now as I mentioned in my last video I edit anime so I use the following two sites to get my anime clips which is the comp squad um, comp dot squad it on Instagram if you follow the links in their bio it'll take you to a compilation document and they create character compilations as well as sort of scenes from like a massive amount of shows. The second place that I get my clips from is anime-raws on tumblr.com and they have a full list of anime raw episodes so that is in full quality without any subtitles. For the next one this is for after you've created your edit so once you've got it all done all of your transitions are put in everything like that we are going to apply a sharp and unsharp mask to the clip. I am using After Effects um, I'm sure that you can get the same effects from other video editing you just want to use a sharp and unsharp mask you just might need to adjust the settings depending on the software that you're using so i've got a few clips here that i've just chucked together from um, one of my favorite shows that i'm loving at the moment um, i'm going to create a new adjustment layer and then i'm going to type in sharp up in effects and presets and then i'm going to apply sharp and unsharp mask to my clip i'll go to full resolution while i show you what this looks like so you can adjust the settings depending on the clips that you are using however this is the settings that i find work best for me so i put the sharpen amount to 35 which you can see has already just sharpened up those lines a little bit and then the unsharp mask i put the amount as 15 and then i put the radius as 55 and you can already see on the screen the difference so essentially an unsharp mask is taking a negative version of the clip and blurring it out and then putting the two versions of the clip together to create the difference and it creates a really sharp image to be honest I don't really know how it works but that's the basics I'm sure that you could use this same sort of process for clips that are in like real footage rather than anime i think you would just need to adjust the sharpness and the unsharp mask to fit that like you know it's not hand drawn um so you would need to adjust that however this works really well for anime because it creates that really sharp look which we love <laughs> all righty part three so this one is a curves adjustment and you can apply this to any software that you're using they will have curves um, so I'm going to take type up in effects and presets and drag the curves onto my adjustment layer and then we're going to go to this part here I'm going to take this bit bring it up a little bit and take this bit and bring it down a little bit so this is essentially an S curve and it increases the contrast of your image it creates a greater difference between the highlights and the shadows in your footage you can take it out like if you do it a lot you know it gets quite saturated um, so I like to just do a subtle curve and just play around with it until it suits the clip that you're using however it is important to check it on all of the clips that you're using to make sure that it looks okay which it does which is good and again I will show you what that looks like without it so let me take off the sharpness and then show you what it looks like with curves on and off so this is without curves 
and this is with curves so you can see it just really increases the contrast which works really well for anime clips again you'll need to adjust it in a bit of a different way and just play around with the settings if you're going to be editing with real footage so that's two ways you can increase the quality of your edits without any plugins so for the third one i'm actually going to be using a plugin which is magic bullet looks and i'm going to create a new adjustment layer and drag looks onto that one. This is a really powerful tool for you to create, to do some advanced color correcting as well as sort of change the coloring of your clips. You can do heaps with it. I use it probably just like scratch the surface with what you can, what you can do with it. However, it works well for my purposes. So it is actually a plugin. You do have to pay for it. However, if you YouTube um, free magic bullet looks plugin download, you could probably find it somewhere but I am in no way shape or form telling you to do that do that at your own risk um, so now that we've got it up I'm going to click up here and press edit and it's gonna take us into the magic bullet looks studio depending on what version you have this will look a bit different but it'll have the same effects that I'm gonna use just in a different spot so the main things that I use is the colorista the three-way one the LUT and the Mojo, which I will apply afterwards. So the first thing I do is go to the Color Restart and I will do a curves adjustment if I haven't already done it. So I'll get rid of that one. The LUT has like color scheme presets, if you want to call them, and you can go through and have a look at them. The biggest tip I have with it is just be careful um, with the one that you're choosing on the clip that you're using. So an example here. You can see that it's actually sort of like color banding. Um, you can do things to help reduce that, but my best bet is just to choose a coloring that doesn't do that or turn down the saturation of it. So it all just depends on the kind of look that you're going for. Um, my favorite is Maxine, Full is here, and Emlo. I'm going to choose Maxine for this one, and then I'm going to turn the strength down to 75% which just helps sort of reduce this kind of color banding over here. And then I'm going to go to tools and click Mojo 2, which you can see has really like brightened up everything and it's kind of like not looking as high quality as it did. So I'm going to turn the these two down and then I'm going to turn the Mojo to about 15%. And then I'm going to turn the strength down to 50% here. So it just kind of brings the colors up, but it's not as intense as it was before. And then I'm just going to click OK, and you can see that's changed again. Again, this isn't a must for creating high quality edits. It's just that extra step if you're interested in it. And so I'm just taking a look at these to make sure that it, the coloring suits these clips as well, which it does, and it's not making any banding or anything like that. For this one, I might actually change it a little bit just because the coloring is quite different. So I will go to the LUT and I'll actually just change it to full is here instead. Still keeping it at 75%. And that just helps kind of like create a more neutral color palette on a clip that is a lot more full. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with the use of Magic Bullet Looks. You can do a lot with it. It's a very powerful tool. I might actually just do its own video on how I use it, but it is an option if you're looking for that. And the last tip that I have is paying attention to your rendering settings or your export settings, depending on what you use. I am specifically gonna be talking about um, the like Adobe suite rather than any others so this may not be applicable to you so you can just like skip to the end if you want when I'm using Adobe After Effects for the first um, few months or so I found that my exported files were huge like a 15 second video would be five gigabytes um, which is massive and it was taking up a lot of space so I looked for alternative ways that I could export it and I discovered exporting through the media in CodaQ rather than actual Adobe After Effects really helps with this and still has a high quality output. So I go up to composition and add to media in CodaQ, which will then bring this window up. So you can go in here and change where you want the file to save. And then once you've chosen where to save it, click up here to under comp1 where it says H264. So once you get to this screen, scroll down through the video settings until you see the bitrate settings 
and you want to make sure that you have selected VBR one pass which is variable bitrate and make sure that your target bitrate is above 30. So essentially the higher the bitrate the larger the file size however the better the quality is. You do actually have three options here the CBR is constant bitrate so the bitrate will stay the same for the entire video. The VBR is good because it varies depending on the clip that is being rendered. So as long as you choose anything above 30 it's fine. I generally go about 40 whatever you feel like and then we go OK and then we export it um, and it should be all good to go. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far and I really hope it helped you in some way shape or form. If you're interested in keeping up with the edits that I've been doing you can check out my socials as well as find out when I'm gonna upload next and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or concerns or anything you want to see me do next. <laughs> anyway I'll see you in the next one. Bye!